Hello everyone, we have started last lecture that is the link budget. So we have seen that link power budget. We have initialized that to learn about rise time budget. Generally a rise time budget is nothing but to obtain the whatever the minimum bit rate required for a given system. And rise time budget analysis is a convenient method for determining the dispersion limitation of an optical fiber link. In a given system, the total rise time of the link is nothing but the sum of the root sum square of the rise time from each contribution. And this this total rise time depending upon four elements one is a transmitter rise time another is about transmitter rise time then group velocity rise time so you can say that a dispersion group velocity dispersion rise time then the modal dispersion rise time and a receiver rise time these are the four factors to be considered to obtain what is the total rise time. So this one is the group, group velocity dispersion rise time. This one is the modal dispersion rise time. This one is the receiver rise time. It is depending upon the electrical bandwidth uh, of the receiver. And this one is about your rise time transmitter rise time. So we need to identify what are the various rise times to define a rise time budget of a optical link. Generally if we use a single mode fiber it doesn't have a group velocity dispersion. So if there is a multi-mode fiber, then and then group velocity dispersion factor comes. So that's why that equation that is total rise time, only three factors. Transmitter rise time, then uh, we have a modal dispersion, then a receiver rise time. If there is multi-mode fiber, so this one additional that is group velocity dispersion factor will come. And in general, in a digital link, what type of format we are using for transmitting a signal? If we consider that RZ format or RZ format, then then that bandwidth will change. So we can say that the transmission rate changes because of that NRZ format. Or RZ data. So we specifically need to identify that what type of bit rate we are using so that we can obtain a receiver rise time. And in general, in transmitter rise time, it is depending upon the what type of source and its driving circuit. Receiver circuit rise time is depending upon the photo detector response and its 3 dB electrical bandwidth of the receiver. The rise time of the receiver is depending upon the what is the time interval between the your receiving data that is and that time interval is defined in terms of electrical bandwidth so we can find out the receiver rise time in terms of a bandwidth there and a fiber rise time for the group velocity dispersion depending upon the what is the total length of the fiber so we can obtain a group velocity dispersion once we know the total rise time bandwidth 
and in the case of a modal dispersion, so pulse broadening, which is depending upon, we say earlier, it is depending upon the length. So, for this modal dispersion, we need to find out what is the total length of the fiber. And we should know that what is the optical bandwidth for the given fiber to obtain the link value. So that's why for the middle dispersion, we can find out a 3 dB optical bandwidth of the fiber link and what is the band full width of maximum bandwidth so that that BM we can find out in terms of full width of maximum bandwidth so we will get the expression for the T modulation that is it modulation sorry modal dispersion rise time so total system rise time is depending upon this four factor and this all these four factor if you see that it is depending upon the bandwidth it is depending upon the length of the fiber it is depending upon the power spectral width of the source and it is depending upon the bandwidth of the electrical receiver so we'll, uh, we can find out the total rise time or we say that a rise time budget for your optical link here some example to obtain the rise time budget in example rise time budget for a multimode link let us continue the analysis of the link and consider that there is LED fiber LED sorry LED source with a, its drive circuit and it has a rise time of 15 nanosecond that is TRX taking a typical LED spectral width that is sigma L 14 nanometer we have a material dispersion related rise time degradation of 21 nanosecond over a 6 kilometer length length of the fiber that is 6 kilometer assuming the receiver has 25 megahertz bandwidth so it is the bandwidth given then from the contribution to the rise time degradation from the receiver is 14 nanosecond that is the receiver one if the fiber we selected has a 400 megahertz per kilometer bandwidth distance product and with q is equal to 0 0.07 then from the equation the modal dispersion induced in the fiber rise time that is 3.9 second nanosecond substituting all these values in the equation we will get the rise time for transmitter that is material dispersion the modal dispersion and then you can say that a residual dispersion so we will get that a total rise system rise time that is 30 nanoseconds if here we say that what is the total time required so that's why this value falls below the maximum all available 35 nanosecond rise time degradation for over 20 megabits per second NRJ data free. that is 0.70 per bit rate so that's why we can consider that a type of a system for using a rise time any second example we consider that and for the given example so some table values are written here what is allowed price time and what is the source rise time in this case example laser diode together with its drive circuit has a rise time of 0 0.025 nanosecond means rise time that is for the transmitter taking a 1550 nanometer laser diode means we can say that uh, what is the operating wavelength and diode spectral width that is sigma lambda that is 0.1 nanometer 
and an average dispersion of 2 picosecond per nanometer into kilometer for the given fiber. That is, dispersion is given. We have GVD related rise time degradation. That is modal we can say material if we have here we have a GVD over a 60 kilometer long optical cable. Assuming in Galli Marcinet APD based receiver has a 2.5 gigahertz bandwidth, then the receiver has a rise time of 0.14 nanosecond. To add up the various contribution, we have a total rise time of 0.14 nanosecond. This, is, this one is about a list of the components in column 1 and the associated rise time in column 2. And column 3 gives the allowed system rise time budget of 0.28 nanosecond for a 2.5 GBP per second NRJ data stream at the loop top. This found from the expression that 0.7 by BNRJ where BNRJ is the bit rate for the NRJ signal. The calculated system rise time of 0.14 nanosecond is shown at the bottom. So, system rise time. And the system rise time in this case is dominated by the receiver and is well within the required limits. So, this is about a bit rate here. We have seen that two equations for the rise time. So, in optical communication, performance can be obtained using the various parameters. For a system, optical performance, depending upon the what is the bit error rate, so minimum power level, in that minimum power level, receiver is able to detect that signal or decision circuitry able to detect that signal level that is 1 and 0. So that's why we can obtain that bit error rate. And within a given period, we can observe, we can identify or we can read out the information that is 1 and 0 and that is called as an eye diagram. What is the total time required maximum allowable time to, to detect? The 1 and 0 and if for a given eye diagram it has a vertical scale and horizontal scale vertical scale define the label horizontal scale define a timing then optical signal to noise ratio for a receiver then amplifier noise and a crosstop that is because of very factor at the receiver so, these are about the performance parameter of optical communication system or a optical communication link. So, bit error we know that we have seen earlier. It is nothing but the error probability and it is depending upon the how many error occur within a particular period of a time and a how many number of bits we are sent. So, total number of errors within a particular period of a time and total number of bits we are friend. So, this one is a curve. So, generally B, B R is 10 raised to the power minus 9 is used in a system or 10 raised to the power minus 12 is used in a system. The eye diagram is a simple powerful measurement system. This one is about vertical eye. It is saying about the label. This one about horizontal eye opening, so in which we can find out the time and that is eye opening and eye close. So, we say that eye opening is an important parameter. Larger size of eye opening is the indication of the burden of the signal. Eye nearly close signal detection is a very difficult or impossible. So, measurement technique to obtain the data there. Signal to noise ratio, it, it is nothing but a net signal power to the net noise power, you can obtain optical signal to noise ratio.